contribution also will be very so or else i would like to talk my lagna with a already bound lagna using nmr structure nmr has been or expect us like happy bound lagna sade those sites are only my interest i would like to talk with that that is also feasible select the position define the region over there and ask us a binding site that you can achieve by means of different binding site under the defined site process then what is actually a docking so docking is often we call as a lock and key process where the confirmation of a ligand and the receptor do not change during the binding this is a simple simplest method to be identified the what a small molecule or significantly contributing for you for particular drug targets so if you for instance if you have very big receptor molecules all the small molecules will bind so in order to define all these problems we have a solution in the various docking methods in discovery studio or c docker it is a one of the famous grid based molecular dynamics based docking and then the lip dock the lip dock is mainly for on hot spot based docking and the ligand fit ligand fit also is grid based docking and mccs for small fragment based docking so we have various tools and algorithms are designed such a way which could be used to base on the application of your drug discovery process so what is the central assumption in drug discovery process for a particular to in order to design a good inhibitors so good inhibitors must possess a structural complementarity for your active site amino acid and the chemical complementarity of the shapes so what are the things which is playing a major role the steric concentration shape size and a chemical concentration we have a chart and the non polar interactions So now, actually, getting into algorithm. Today, I am going to show you the molecular dynamics based algorithms. That is a C docker. So once you are done with your protein and you are ready for the binding site, now it is ready for docking. You will prepare your ligands and it's kept ready. After doing which is ready, it's now ready for docking. When both the things are ready, we have to choose which algorithm we are going to implement and have to see the non-bonding interactions. So here comes an algorithm as an instance for another C docker. It generates the ligand confirmations using high temperature. molecular dynamics and simulation so this is a grid based algorithm that employs a random ligand confirmation to the high temperature molecular dynamics techniques and also uses a random bond rotation and the grid based simulation analyzing finally goes for a full minimization and will be determining your ligand process this is a iterative process and this process will be keep on uh, keep on going as it finds a refined ligand process for your active site or a binding site of your interest so how do we get this input your ligand molecules to the specific site and if you have a say for instance after doing adn key screening and then a final lab report like that we have more than thousands of ligands you cannot i will not uh, suggest to go for c docker i would like to suggest everyone to go for a high throughput scanning method is called a lip dock which i am not explaining here but you can identify in a help menu what is a lip dock and all so you can go for high throughput scanning using a lip dock and finally we will be getting some good molecular scoring functions we have to go for c docker and then scoring and analyzing your ligand molecules that is in a case if you have a landed up with the no more than thousands of molecules in the after staining process if you have hundreds and few molecules it is approachable to go for c docker so input your receptor input your ligand automatically sites will be selected and you have those clusters And in introducing the, all the options and keeping us deep, you can see here the dynamic step is taken for a very high temperature molecular dynamics and for a very simulation and like that's why we call this as a molecular dynamic space docking. And we finally get the results like this. There are some compound to be docked, some compound to be failed. Why it is failed? All information should be getting in the log uh, result page. And the dock process, the minus the C dock energy value higher, the more favorable the interaction is. So negative contribution should be there for our scoring functions. And this is all. Once you're done with the process, if you have a more process, seven hundred thousand process, again the manual we cannot spend the manual time doing this process. We give this of all the works to the tools to do this process. Once you got this results, you will be using analyze like our process and interaction filtration, and finally non-bonding interactions. 
So how do you see the atomic level interactions happen for system? Just a small demonstration. So this is how the active site amino acid and ligand will be playing, which we cannot able to see. But this is how the process. They will be exchanging the atoms. Once they exchange the atoms, the interactions will happen like this. The complementary interaction between your active site amino acid atom to your chemical structure atoms. This is atom-atom interactions. This is that's why it calls atomic level interactions. So this is how you can see the interactions are happening in terms of an axons. All the distances are measured in terms of an axons. And you can see the various non bonding interactions can be calculated in this kind of studio. So for instance, unstable bonds, unstable charge, halogens, hydrophobic, hydrogen bond, and metal interactions. So all these interactions you can be able to see in this kind of studio. So we interpret the results. You can able to see something the non paper interactions also. So when you see from various forces, you have to avoid the unfavorable interaction forces and prefer to take only the paper interaction forces. This is a 2D representation of interaction pictures. And how to analyze this is these results also not doing manually, all the results will be created only we are copying and pasting in the Excel sheet or wherever you want to show it as a results. So we have an input on the distance and the light and protein interaction, atomic level interaction, what's the distance, what's the category of this particular interaction, what bond of interactions also happening, you can able to tabulate it easily. And this is how it will be present in the 3D interaction 3D view. And if it is a one or two or three, then we can do it manually. If you have more than hundreds and thousands, it is not easy to do it in analyzing the process of molecules. That's why we have a two calls scoring and analysis. We have an analysis like that process. Just you have to input your input result and then output your doctor results. It will calculate and shows you how many favorable interaction, unfavorable interaction, how many hydrogen interactions are happening, hydrophobic are happening, and what are the top five statistically residual analysis and the frequency of binding analysis and heat map. So you get a many number of files when you do this analysis like that process. I'm going to show all this also today. So let's start the demonstration and show you how to prepare the proteins, binding site analysis, molecular dynamics blocking, and analyze the process and interaction filter. Today I'm going to illustrate in terms you know, with an example of an 6NOJ that is an spike like a protein receptor binding domain of SARS-CoV-2. So I'm opening my window. So file open URL. The PDD ID is 6M0J. Click open. You can see this downloading over in the left hand corner. Once it is open, go to macromolecules. So, first, you go to structure, structure, split cell, remove cell, and then go to macromolecules. Protein report and analysis. See the protein report and learn about its uh, various information of the basic information of protein, what is the molecular weight and what type of metal take it and what are light and sound to it and its molecular formulae, solvents, how many chains are there, if the A chain and E chain, if there isn't any problem in a spurious data, no has been missing and incomplete chain residues, alternative confirmers, invalid residues, and where the invalid residues are present, in which amino acid is present, and which location it is present, and the biomolecular generation information. And finally, we have it for the PDB information, which is which for which particular protein, it's like type of protein, the separate binding domain found with an ACE2. And then we have an angiotensin converting enzyme to that is called ACE2. And Let's see one other is the easy number, enzyme number, internet molecule, or not all the from which organisms. So those informations by taking a protein report, we'll be getting all these informations. So now I'm going to work out only on the E chain. So select only the E chain and delete the other chains. In case if there is any water molecules are playing a major role in, the, in this particular e chain, we have to retain this molecule during the protein preparation also. Input your molecule. And then we have to are going to run a prepared protein. 
the bar proteins, input molecule, the protein molecule, then the load stream, and then advanced option. If something has added for into some PR to do something, we have to look for a charm minimization just to be done. Track the process. Detailed report will help us to show you how the process is running. Now it's comparing the data. Protein preparation started now. Cleaning the protein. Alternative confirmers and invalid residues. All the things will be taken care of during this process. Waiting for another five steps to complete. Yes, now finished all this process has been finished in 100 percent. Once 100 percent protein report is done, yes, we got the result and it will be automatically opened. If you click protein report, you can see this now. So we are taking only for another e chain and respective things alone will be equipped to see. And what are squares data? All the things will be up now will be keep on uploaded in here after doing protein preparation. Close the old protein report and even your input. And if you click S, yes, because we are running using tool, we have to save this protocol and right click and you can see the detailed report. So what are squares data is prepared, laboratory confirmers, and what are the problems that's been rectified, you can see in this report in the close this one. And then I have prepared molecule. What is my next step? I have to identify the binding. I have to define the binding site. If there is a gap in chain is introduced, that will be heightened different in color. Now go to receptor like on interactions. Define as a receptor. Once you define as a receptor, you can by means of receptor cabinet just click it off. It will run by means of so very fastest matter and identify the sites. I am not going to do that. PDB site records are not there. If it is there, it will be showing you PDB site records. Instead, I know that there are certain crucial amino acids are very important for harboring into one the human ACP receptors. So what are the residues? I collected by means of literature reviews and then uh, studied the data and I am selecting these residues. Say for instance, 86, uh, 59, 87, 89, 93, 98, 500, and then 501, 502, 505, and 504. So these are the very important crucial residues are required for in a like like the protein to interact with an AC2. See if I block this residue, then I am stopping indirectly stopping this process. This is defined as a binding site. Now I define as a binding site. You can see this. These are the interface residues. Now I am going to use this as the correct. If you want to label, you can label it. I mean as if that will be helpful when we go for a non-bonding non interaction analysis. That. Okay. okay. You can see the labelings happen from the correct selection. You can see how the residues. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to add all the compounds now. The prepared molecules. I'm removing these attributes because there will be a lot of tasks to be greater. That's why I'm removing this. Now I have these molecules. I'm going to do docking, put the protocols, the subtle like on interactions, seal of the input receptor, ligands, and giving all the options as such. Most cluster random confirmations. I'm not changing any options, I'm keeping as such. And orientation still fine. And uh, you can see simulation elements. Everything I'm keeping as such and advanced options. You can see how the postings are going to happen. Even you can run it in a parallel process also. If you are running in a batch, you have to keep a set rule. And a batch you could also keep it as well.
and the turn the process. So every time if it says your input as is a protocol and runs and sales. It presents all. It will run in terms of the percentage from 0%, 1%. So percent by percentage will increase and till 100 percent completed, you have to wait for the results. So once you've done this process, you can see it's running now. First I have given to only one molecule. Now the sort of things up to you can run up to 10 different type of an uh, analysis can be done parallel in discovery studio. And 11th will be a queue and then once the first one is finished, we get the results. So now see how the results will be. This is a seat of the results looks like this. Summary and then click here to report window and the report window and give you my results. So you can see we have removed the visibility log and look for the scoring functions. See local energy values, see local infraction energy values, course numbers, and even the details about your lifelines. You can sort the values also. Minus 35 is nothing but a minus 35 C doctor energy value. That's why it is commonly given as a minus C doctor energy. So I can see, see, even though it is having a more number of scores, as for, I mean, uh, I cannot do it manually for each and every scores. That's why I go for scoring analysis to stop this process. I have to input my receptor and then my Ligon molecules all, all molecules, and closing all the inputs. And then I have to, I'm going to check it for a heat map for all the molecules, favorable, halogen, hydrophobic, and advanced options. You can see here, here itself you can do the interaction filtration, interacting residues, sort only the process which is interacting. So a bound like that with interaction filter, that's why I defined earlier as a binding site. Now run the process, I think it hardly takes on a second to finish the process. Less like that process running, percentage wise in France, 0%, 10, 15, like that. 62 process, okay, fine, done. Rather than 15 to 20 seconds. 55 courses. So we are given 80 courses. It sorted and gives us only the 55 courses. That's more, those 55 courses alone is interacting with the uh, binding site residues. So by clicking and checking everyone, it's uh, it's again it's not an appreciable thing. So if you want to save time, we have to do it in a smarter way. So if you get an interaction for a fair but unfair also, there is some process will also make an unfavorable interactions that we can sort it out. This is a recipe interaction for fair forms. This is for hydrogen bonding. This is for hydrophobic. You can go back and you can see the frequency for analysis. How many favorable interactions are happening? For which amino acids is happening, those frequency of residues interaction also will be getting here. For each amino acids, if there is a favorable count is happening for a common favorable, unfavorable, allergen, hydrophobic, and other interactions. So, those informations you can gain it in the frequency residues. And we have statistical information, it says about an how many favorable and unfavorable forms are there? And then what are the residues top five residues of playing a major role in the particular interactions? And you can see for an uh, hydrogen bonding interactions. If you are very specifically you need to identify, you can see here itself whether your uh, amino acid of interest is having hydrogen or hydrophobic interactions or not. This is a uh, very sophisticated and easiest way to interpret your results. And we have a map for favorable. So this is a very good and good representation of a map mapping. So when you select, so you can see your legend, zero is for zero interaction and one for one interaction, two and three. When I select then automatically in the graphical view, it will be highlighted in tablet view. 
and the respective topic or the respective line or row you can pick it up and you can study for the further analysis so in that way this kind of like heat map analysis will be very useful mm -hmm. so again i'm picking other molecules select group of molecules it also will be highlighted you can copy this one control c and you can put it in a new window also because it's having a maximum interactions right that's fine and you can put the bomb like on to see it's a non bonding interactions yes So you can close this one, and similarly you can analyze for a hydrogen bonding and hydrophobic interactions also. So I have opened for a hydrophobic interaction, and you can see the maximum one and the minimum zero. When I select it in the heat map view, it will be automatically highlighted in the table view for which amino acid is happening. All this information selected, and you can able to view in the table view. So, what? How many types of interactions you are looking for? For all the results, we will be getting the information using the analyze like that process. This is for finally with the hydration form. This is zero bonding, and some amino acids and some compounds are making a very good interaction that you can see here. And these areas are no interactions for this particular amino acids. I'm closing this results. If I click here to view results, there is one thing we have to do. We have to sort out the unfavorable interactions of the molecules. We have favorable and favorable hydrophobic counts because we should not spend our time in wasting and finding at unfavorable interactions. So I can filter unfavorable interactions. Unfavorable count will be there. Select. Next to main apply okay. So unfavorable counts will be sorted out. So finally, we have only the forty-four uh, sorted columns, which will be very easy to interpret also. You want to select the molecule and see non-bonding interactions. Select the molecule. Define the molecule. Go to the receptor like one interaction, view interactions, define the like one, and define the receptor, and look for its interactions. How this interactions are happening? Like one interactions. Even you can label interactions very easily. Selecting the binding site, right click, label. So now these molecules are having interacting with your active site, and you can see the distance in 3D view, and what type of interaction is happening. Also, you can able to see over here. Show type of interactions. Usually, we'll be seeing only in 3D view, but here in this class, you can able to see only even in the 3D view also. And interacting receptors. If you want to add other molecule interaction also. Interact with other atoms. Label add apply. Okay. So this is the values of this. You can also create a 2D diagram. You want to represent 2D diagram in a good representative way. Go to display style. Okay. This and residues you can also change. This and change it to one. Apply. Okay. Now it looks good, better. And what is the interaction? Select so interaction, show distance, apply, and apply. So this is how we have to select and we have to analyze our long complexes. Say so this will my process ends here. Actually, if your if your your objective is to finish within your uh, main uh, within docking, your process gets over here. And if you like to see it for another interaction, that is also feasible here. So if I keep moving this one. You can see automatically. You no need to check once again. 
this option will help us to identify the impact of other molecules and its interactions also. And you can see the seed of our reactions. So what I'm going to do, if I want to proceed further for a molecular dynamic simulation, I'll be selecting the best molecule and post from a C docking or whatever the docking results, and I'm going to club it into the single molecule. Just click and make it as a single molecule. Right click, attributes, change it as a compound or whatever the attribute you like to name it. Play and OK. So now this complex, I can use it for a molecular dynamics and simulation study. This are the like our interaction studies. And that also helps me to identify what is the stability of this particular system, whether the molecule is constantly having the interaction with the site or not, and RNS analysis, RNS of will be totally made or not. Those information I will gain only when I run the molecular dynamics and simulation. So now I just am as of now it's completed, but still I want to show you the how this dynamics is happening. So what it happened with the protocol. Just again and bring back to the atom style. Okay. We have selected molecule. Plate walls are moving as of now. Since it is an output from a charm, you can see that the hydrogen bonds are exiting out, but it will not happen for all the protocols. So now we have to apply the force field. That is the beginning of your dynamics. Apply your force field, charm force field. And once you apply force field, go to protocol, simulation, dynamics and simulation, cascade, dynamics, cascade, standard dynamics, cascade. Input your receptor. And then you can choose an uh, algorithms. As of now, I'm not going to touch much about it, just I'm giving you inputs how to do dynamics in this Discover Studio. So, minimization step, I'm limiting to the 100, Stephen is a conjugate gradient 200, and the heating steps, and the equilibration, and the production. Production EI only we have to increase 1 nanosecond means 1000 picoseconds, or 2000 picoseconds, 10,000 picoseconds, and what type of canonical examples that you are going to introduce and implement solar methods, electrostatics, advanced, and what algorithm shape and strength using a dynamic indicator, leaf rock, velvet, velvet algorithm. So these are the things I am just keeping as a, as a default and running the process. So after running the process, I'm not going to show you the demonstration on that. Anyhow, I'm going to see show you the report. So how to interpret the results and analyze trajectory also. So you can see the standard cascade is running, step one, step two, and step three, and then up to five steps and then productions. After giving a production, you have to analyze your trajectory. That you can see it under the simulation analysis. Under analysis, we have a lot of analysis can be done by you for your protein receptor, protein protein, or whatever the input system, you can choose the respective analysis and you can run your process. So I'm just giving you a very short hint to end with running for an analytical dynamics. So it's the most important technique to study the real-time motion of a particle using a classical mechanical approach of Newton's second law of motion. So it is help us to understand the, how this uh, both the systems or both the systems are involving and the atomic movements are happening in the 3D environment. So in the standard dynamics cascade, either you can do it individually or by means of cascading steps, that is input your receptor, introducing a minimization one, introducing a minimization two. So these ones, this uh, minimization algorithm will help us to resolve the initial poor contact within the system. And then what if there's any resolve patients are there, it will try to clear it and then only the end in, in the into one heating actual dynamics process. So we have three different types of a process here. Heating, 
to for the heating of system to target temperature. If if you are going to work it on enzymes, you are you can very well you can change the heating your systems and you can identify the ideal temperature for your systems. So for instance, some protein the like enzymes work on two seventy three Kelvin, some will work on two eighty three Kelvin. You can convert into the Kelvin scale and you can input here and you can study the effect of impact of the heating for your molecules and integration. The purpose is it's it ensure your system is properly distributed among the all degrees of freedom. So this also allows to achieve the thermal equilibrium at the target temperature. Once this equilibration is done, then finally we are going to the production. So production can be done by means of three ways: NVT, NPT, and NVE at the given temperature. Here comes an actual dynamics process. So what are the different ensembles to run your dynamics? If you are inputting your protein protein molecule. Along with the uh, periodic boundary conditions, we will be choosing NPT and NPT for an, uh, checking of temperature and NB for a constant energy. So this is how the actual process of uh, molecular dynamical simulation. So select a protein, apply phosphine, and the input of for MDS, solid system, from prions, minimization, and then production. Finally, analyze RFST, RMSF, and radius of variation. So this is how we have to Set over experimental setups, and you get a file outputs like this: trajectory file, BST files, parameter files, and the force field parameters. Please start files. If there is any, uh, so if you are running a system, it has happened somewhere, you cannot able to run. You can run by means of the Please start the systems, and this is how your output will looks like: minimization step, starting, ending, initial potential energy, final potential energy, what is the temperature, and other energy parameters. And this I am showing for the compound one, compound two, to make a comparison at the energy level of temperature, and then the total energy temperature, and then a comparison at the each stage heating, equilibration, and production. And after you have now uh, use the output of your trajectory, I mean uh, after doing dynamics, we have to see well how far the RMSD calculation root mean square deviation between one confirmation that you were. Initial confirmation of a molecule and then fluctuations. How whether the particular active site is properly maintained without fluctuation or not. That you can study in the RMSF and then radius of variation. We will be studying a protein fourteen and the angle. How it is properly maintained throughout the studies. So these types of studies will help us to gain knowledge about structural confirmation changes or transition during the dynamic process. And this is how the these are the automatically generated graphs in the service studio once you analyze the trajectories. And radius of variation, there you can see it in the tools, you know, radius of variation will calculate for an RMST, RMS stuff like that. And this is a comparison. If you have a more number of molecules as an output, you can compare which compound is maintaining a stability throughout the dynamics with respect to temperature, with respect to time, and also the what is the changes occurring. So you can see that compound two is constantly maintained, where the compound one is having a fluctuating, and the after the six hundred picoseconds, and then again coming back. So stability of the system will take for a longer time to achieve the process. So based on that, you can increase the uh, simulation times. Similarly, RMSF. In case if this is your helix or a uh, loop region showing a more deviation, you can see the compound one is high deviating as compared to the compound two. In case if this is a residue of your interest, where the deviations are very less, that means it's constantly maintained. That is how we have to interpret root means by fluctuation of your atoms in your protein when binding with the ligand. And finally, the radius of variation. It says about an, uh, uh, how the protein folding. Has been maintained throughout the system. You can see the compound one; it's having certain deviation. As compound one is constantly moving. So finally, I'll be taking a compound one for my further analysis for large scale dynamic process.